And as we all know, sunsets in the west. So this is the western direction. You see here, gate up and down, South Mumbai. Up to our right will be north. So we see here, Berlin is in town, Dudash is in town. Many people think this is Eiffel Tower. <laughs> we will see a very bright object in the mid-western part of the sky. And that is going to be planet Venus. Venus planet. Objects are called planetary nebulae, and this one is called Southern Green Nebula. And it is the most detailed picture ever taken of this object. So, the next slide we can see it has been compared with Hubble Space Telescope, this is star forming region to the solar system. And now, imagine we have a telescope and we point it, our telescope, and it. And this but minus the colors. What is it? Yes, the colors in space. The star of the night sky is the night star. No, it is seriously serious. So that's all Zodiac's name. The part of the planet. Rashishtra is accompanied by his wife, Arundhati. And we discover the Rashishtra itself is a double star. And further down south, almost equally distant, will be this bluish color star, Spica or Chitra. Times the mass of the sun. Black hole. And it's a radio image, by the way, it is not what we search. Professor of Mathematics and Astronomy, who also happened to be a genius. 
took his first look at the sky through a telescope he had built by hand. Recently, spy glasses had been invented to magnify things in the distance, such as ships. Galileo designed a much stronger spyglass and turned it upward. Would the telescope show him things about the universe that were invisible to the naked eye? Galileo was the first human being to see the mountains and craters on the moon. Before him, people believed that the moon was perfectly smooth. But Galileo's telescope revealed perfect features much like the moon. When he pointed his telescope at the planet Jupiter, he was shocked to find four small stars around it, which no one had ever seen. The next night, the stars had changed position. He concluded correctly that the stars were actually moons circling Jupiter. A mysterious glowing streak in the sky, known because of its dim, white appearance as the Milky Way. Maybe Galileo could finally figure out what it was. It was made up of countless stars too faint to be seen without a tell than Galileo's. This image was taken by one of our most remarkable telescopes. It's not on Earth though, it's in space, where the view is not hampered by clouds, pollution or the atmosphere. The Hubble Space Telescope. Through it, we've seen things in the universe that are breathtaking. Because of our technology, we understand a lot more than Galileo could. But there remain great questions. How did the universe begin? What is it made of? How big is it? How many stars are there? What is the future of the universe? This is the greatest of all mysteries, and the answers that will unlock its secrets await new discoveries, perhaps by future scientists watching this show right now. Is vast. It stretches as far as we can see. Beautiful trillions of stars and the billions of galaxies. The universe is all things everywhere. Greece, Aryabhat in India, Copernicus in Poland, and Galileo in Italy. Some believe that it was created in the remote past, and others say that it has always been around. Present day science estimates that the universe is about 14 billion years old, and suggests that it exploded into being in a big bang. <laughs> According to this theory, all of the matter in the universe, universe unbelievably hot and expanding, and then gradually cooling down. When it was born, it was all energy and gravity, the force of attraction, and some of this energy turned into what we know as matter. This primordial matter gave birth to the elements. Hydrogen and helium were formed in the first 30 minutes or so. As stars later formed, they produced the other elements. After expanding and cooling for millions of years of its infancy, the universe entered the equivalent of its early childhood. A lot of interesting things began to happen. 
the attraction of gravity brought some of the matter together into immense clumps, here and there. These clumps of gas and dust eventually collapsed and became galaxies. The hydrogen and helium gases in the galaxies broke up into smaller clouds. From these clouds, the first stars in the galaxies were born. Moly were super massive. But they lasted just a few million years, then blew up in catastrophic explosions called supernovae. Curiously, all the elements to form life were produced inside the hot interiors of these massive stars. When they exploded, those elements were flung out into the extreme coldness of interstellar space. The blast of these supernovae also triggered the formation of new stars, a second generation. The simple state of radiant energy present at the time of its formation had grown into a massive collection of billions and billions of galaxies. Some of these galaxies are spiral shaped, some elliptical, and another stick irregular shape, sometimes a result of colliding galaxies. Generation after generation of stars were born, produced elements for life, such as carbon, oxygen, and iron, and eventually died. As it has continued to expand for billions of years, the universe has become thin and dispersed and extremely cold. Hundreds of years ago, we believed that Earth was the center of the universe. Then science proved that our planet and other planets actually revolve around our sun. Today, we know that the sun itself is but one star among 400 billion stars that make up our Milky Way galaxy. And that our galaxy, though composed of hundreds of billions of stars, can seem insignificant when we realize that it is just one among hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. Our Milky Way galaxy, formed about a billion years after the Big Bang, making it some 13.2 billion years old. The most ancient stars within it are about 10 billion years old, and the youngest are just a few million years old. In fact, baby stars are being born even today. Our sun is a middle-aged star, four and a half billion years old, born from a cloud of gas and dust which we call a solar nebula. The birth of the sun was brought about by the explosive death of a nearby star. Shock waves from the explosion of the dying star triggered the formation of the solar system. Most of the gas and dust in the cloud went to form the sun, and a small amount collected to form rings and debris around it. Most of the material in the rings then coalesce to form planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Smaller leftover bits of matter became dwarf planets like Pluto, asteroids, and comets. Of the eight planets, only the third planet evolved. The Earth was initially very hot and there was no atmosphere. In the course of time, the outer surface cooled into a hard crust, encasing a core of molten rock. In many places, the liquid interior broke through the crust as volcanoes and spewed out red-hot lava and gases. These gases form Earth's first atmosphere. One theory holds that clouds in this early atmosphere showered rain unceasingly for thousands of years, giving rise to our oceans. 
Another theory is that the water masses on Earth were created by impacts from massive comets, which are made largely of ice crystals. Had you been able to watch the birth of our planet from space, it might have looked like this. The solar system started condensing about four and a half billion years ago. A couple hundred million years later, the Earth had appeared. After another 300 million years, the atmosphere and the oceans had covered Earth. Another 500 million years passed and some primitive forms of life appeared, such as blue-green algae. Another 500 million years, and bacteria and simple plants had arrived. Then, over billions of years, more and more complex organisms evolved, first on the sea and later on land. Eventually, some 200 million years ago, the gigantic animals we call dinosaurs dominated Earth, only to disappear about 70 million years ago probably as a result of climatic changes caused by the crash of a large asteroid. Setting the stage for the rapid evolution of mammals, foremost among them humans, who began to shape nature itself. Our ancestors made stone tools, used fire, and learned to farm. Over thousands of years, we have tried to comprehend the universe by observing it. Today, we do so using increasingly powerful telescopes and computers, trying always to formulate a comprehensible picture of the universe. Skywatchers exclusively search for extraterrestrial life. Systems around them. As biologist and author Julian Huxley has said, there may be other beings in this vast universe endowed with reason, purpose, and aspiration, but we know nothing of them. So far as our knowledge goes, the human mind and personality are unique and constitute the highest product yet achieved by the cosmos. Man is that process of reality, said Huxley, in which and through which the cosmic process has become conscious and has begun to comprehend itself. As Huxley suggests, the universe does not exist out there independent of us. We are inescapably involved in what appears to be unfolding before us. We are small participants in a universe of extraordinary scale. Our future as a species is intimately connected with the future evolution of the universe. change drastically. The continents which is drifting apart may add mountains and create a new one where none existed before. A huge asteroid could hit the Earth and happen in the age of the dinosaurs. After billions of years, the sun itself may expand into a red giant engulfing the Earth and beyond. In the past, some astronomers theorized that our expanding universe might eventually slow down, halt, and begin to collapse. Who knows what future generations might discover? They are likely to have an entirely different understanding of the universe than we do 
As each great mystery is solved, another arises. That's the beauty of science.